Over the past two years, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway has steadily been accumulating shares in two large US oil companies, namely Chevron and Occidental Petroleum. And although it'll take years to see exactly how those investments play out for Warren Buffett and for Berkshire Hathaway, uh, I have covered here on the channel in a few videos now some of the reasons why I personally think that Buffett might be invested. I think he probably likes the long-term outlook for the price of oil given steadily increasing demand and relatively flat supply. And secondly, I think he likes the capital allocation and the price of a lot of these oil companies. In many cases, they are cheaper than the average company in, say, the S&P 500 on a price-to-earnings basis, and many of them have been quite consistent in saying that they will return their capital to shareholders through buybacks and dividends, uh, as well as repaying debt in a lot of cases as well. In this video, I want to go back to a previous Buffett oil investment from the early 2000s where he invested $488 million into a different oil company, but for very similar reasons to uh, why we think Buffett might be investing in oil today. And I want to take you through uh, some of the factors around that company and exactly how the investment played out, which, spoiler alert, it was extremely successful. If you enjoy the video and haven't subscribed to the Investing with Tom channel already, please be sure to do so, but without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So what was the oil company that Buffett bought in the early 2000s? Well, it was PetroChina, a Chinese-based oil company which at the time represented about 3% of the entire globe's oil production. Uh, that would put PetroChina at about 80% of the size of ExxonMobil, so it was a very significant uh, large company. And as you'll see in this clip from Warren Buffett, uh, he was a fan really of two main things that PetroChina were doing. One, they were generating a lot of cash relative to the price of the business uh, in the stock market. And secondly, he really liked how they were allocating that cash. Last year it earned $12 billion. Now, if you look at the Fortune 500 list, <clears throat> my guess is you won't find more than about five companies in the United States that earn <clears throat> $12 billion or more. So it's a, it's a major company. At the time we bought it, the total market value was $35 billion. So we bought it at about three times what it earned last year. It does not have unusual amounts of leverage. Uh, it, it, uh, in the annual report, they say something which very, very few companies do say, but which I think is actually fairly important. They say they will pay out about 45% of the amount they earn. Uh, so if you can buy it at three times earnings, what turn out to be three times earnings, and you get 45% of 33%, you know, <clears throat> you're getting a 15% yield on your cash yield on your investment. After accumulating his stake in PetroChina in 2003 and 2004, Buffett ended up paying what turned out to be about three times PetroChina's 2004 earnings. And he also really liked the capital allocation. Now, unlike at, say, Occidental Petroleum today, where most of the cash has been funneled towards share repurchases uh, and debt repayment and a small amount towards dividends, PetroChina were quite clear on their policy around paying dividends. Uh, rather unusually, they stated uh, the specific percentage that they would try and target in terms of their annual dividend uh, payments, which is about 45%. That's pretty rare in US companies and also in uh, some of these Chinese companies in my experience as well. It's actually a little more common down under here uh, in New Zealand and also in Australia. It's not unusual to see companies have quite a clear dividend policy where they uh, target paying out say 50% of their earnings. But nonetheless in Buffett's experience, uh, pretty unusual to see a company say that and uh, like Buffett explained in that clip, if he paid three times earnings and 45% uh, of earnings are being paid out as a dividend, uh, you know, 33% times 45% is about a 15% cash dividend yield right out of the gate for Buffett. Now, according to Berkshire Hathaway's 2004 annual report, they invested $488 million into PetroChina, which represented about a 1.3% ownership stake in the company. Now, Buffett has actually publicly said that he would have liked to have bought more of PetroChina, but he was restricted in a couple of ways. Firstly, uh, just through uh, his size, the amount of money he's able to deploy into a single company. Uh, but secondly, the reporting required 
requirements uh, kind of caught Berkshire Hathaway out a little and restricted them from being able to uh, buy more stock without the price running up. In the US, for example, uh, anytime you own more than 5% of the voting shares outstanding in a company, you are required to file with the SEC. Uh, and anytime you get above 10%, there's further uh, regulatory requirements. And that's why for Occidental Petroleum, for example, we get uh, pretty quick the information on whether Buffett is adding to his position or selling his position much quicker than we would get in, say, a quarterly 13F filing for most of his other stuff. Stocks. Now in China, at the time at least, the regulatory filing rules are 10% ownership. Uh, so if Buffett were to get to 10% ownership of PetroChina, he would have to file publicly and that would be public information and everyone would see it. Now although that 10% rule was in place at the time Buffett made this investment, uh, PetroChina uh, fairly unusually had 90% uh, ownership by the Chinese government and they owned uh, a slightly different share class which left only 10% of the ownership of the business as sort of publicly available float in the stock market. And unfortunately for Buffett, he had to uh, file his ownership once he basically owned 10% of the 10%, or in other words, you know, 1% ownership of the overall company. So he was able to get to about 1.3% uh, once the news kind of broke of Buffett's ownership. The price did run up a fair amount. Uh, Buffett, as always, is fairly price sensitive in his investments, so they kind of turned off the tap in terms of the purchasing at about that 1.3% mark. Again, with something like Occidental Petroleum, uh, we've seen Buffett also be quite price sensitive. Over the past 12 months, it's been as high as $77 per share. Um, but as you'll see on the screen here, um, Buffett has been pretty patient in waiting for the share price to get uh, into sort of the 50s, you know, below $60 per share uh, to continue accumulating stock. So how did the PetroChina investment play out for Buffett? Well, basically two main things happened. Firstly, um, Buffett did get his big dividends. He got uh, his roughly 45% of earnings paid out, as you'll see on the screen here. Um, but secondly, and potentially more important for Buffett, is oil prices during his holding period went up a lot. Now, I'm unsure whether Buffett specifically had any sort of view on the long-term outlook for oil prices, but regardless, uh, at the time Buffett made his initial investment, oil prices were about $35 per barrel. By the time he eventually sold his stock, oil was $75 per barrel, uh, which really had two flow-on effects. Firstly, it significantly grew PetroChina's earnings, and given their 45% uh, payout ratio you know, dividend policy, it also significantly grew the dividends that Berkshire were receiving. And secondly, it significantly increased the stock price. Um, of course, as earnings go up, typically stocks go up as well. PetroChina was no exception there, uh, and the multiple being put on those earnings also also went up significantly as well. So if we look uh, through Berkshire's annual reports kind of year by year, um, by 2004, Berkshire's $488 million initial investment had a market value of $1.25 billion. Uh, keep in mind, Berkshire are also getting those fat dividend payments uh, additionally as well. Um, but if we fast forward another year, that had grown to 1.9 billion in 2005. By 2006, it was 3.3 billion. And in 2007, the stake was eventually sold for $4 billion, which is about an 8.2 times uh, return in four or five years. Plus, of course, the big uh, chunk of dividends uh, that Buffett received in cash each and every year that he held PetroChina stock. Now the decision to sell here I find quite an interesting one. Of course Buffett is known for being a very long term kind of hold forever type investor, um, particularly with the really high quality great businesses as he calls them. The likes of uh, Apple, Coca-Cola, American Express, these are stocks he's um, held for a very long time and will probably continue to hold for a very long time. Uh, whereas these volatile commodity companies like oil companies, he does seem to be quite willing to exit the position if conditions change in any way. Now this is probably a topic for another day, but PetroChina was quite a controversial position because they had a significant owner in China National Petroleum, 
Um, Berkshire very unusually actually had a shareholder vote at one of their annual meetings where um, shareholders voted on whether Berkshire should you know sell out of their Petrotrona stake for these political reasons and um, Buffett ended up you know encouraging shareholders to vote against that proposal to divest their stake uh, but nonetheless he actually ended up selling not long after for entirely different reasons basically uh, for price and, and valuation reasons. And Buffett explains that pretty well here in this clip uh, apologies in advance for the poor video quality uh, the quality of the information is quite good have you sold your entire stake of petrochina yeah we, we've sold it, it, it but we sold it based on price it had nothing to i mean it, it i think at the time the annual meeting it was around uh, in terms of the american stock it was around 110 and uh, I, I think it's more than double since then unfortunately i sold a little too soon but it was it was a hundred percent a decision based on valuation when we bought petrochina the whole company was selling for $35 billion, if you take the number of shares and multiply by the price. When we sold it, it was at varying prices, but it was at about uh, eight times that price, wow. about, about $275. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, it was more. The original price was 20 in terms of U.S. We sold it from 160 to 200 or something like that. A nice, tidy profit. Yeah, we made, we made about $3.5 billion on a $500 million investment, as it turned out. I still sold it way too soon. <laughs> Since I sold it, they must have shot a gun off and said, my Warren sold, now it's time to let it go up. So overall, I think a pretty fascinating case study of uh, yet another one of Warren Buffett's very successful investments, this time in the oil space. Uh, he definitely had a bit of luck involved from the big run up in oil prices, but going in he had quite the margin of safety. He was paying quite a modest multiple of earnings and uh, PetroChina were quite clear about how much of the earnings they were going to pay each year as a dividend to Buffett. So he liked the price and he liked the capital allocation and I expect he probably has a reasonably similar view about his current oil investments. Although, of course, their earnings, like all oil companies, will be heavily influenced by the price of oil and nobody really knows for sure what that's going to look like in the future. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below on the PetroChina investment from Warren Buffett. Was the great return uh, mainly luck? Was it mainly skill? Was it a bit of a combination of both? I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on that. And if you enjoy these types of videos and haven't subscribed to the channel already, please be sure to do so. But that's it from me and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.